you'll be familiar with the following pictures. Protests outside the G20 conference back in 2009, demonstrators supergluing themselves to bank trading floors and attacking coal power stations en masse. These scenes all feature environmental campaigners. They're included in a new film by documentary maker Emily James, who's been following activists for 12 months, and she's with us now, along with campaigner Marina Pepper. Good morning to you, Good morning. Good morning. We'll talk more in just a moment. First, here's a look at the film. Doing some basic techniques that might come in useful for the first 24 hours while we're settling down with um, with the police. If we do need to um, use blockading techniques before we have our defences built, then these will be the sort of things we'll have to use bodies. So that's all we've got. So if you're my friend and you were going to give me the bumps, we would do it like this. Yeah, so four people. <laughs> Yay! Woo! <laughs> that's rigid. That's right. easy to pick up. Now, try floppy. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot harder. Yeah. That's no harder, isn't it? So that's a, that's a, that's a really Preparing for protest there. Yeah, the film's producer, Emily James, and one of the activists you saw there in that clip, Marina Pepper, joins us now. Unexpected practical problems there, Marina, with the, the sort of mm. things you wear. Um, Emily, what is the aim of this film? Because it involves a lot of protests that to a large number of people watching this programme will think are against the law, are disruptive, are expensive um, and are unpleasant. Well, I mean, the, the aim of the film really was just to document what was going on with these groups. Um, so I filmed for a year, uh, 2009 into 2010, with Climate Camp and Plain Stupid and a kind of wider community of activists, and of which Marina was one of the key stars that mm. I found early on and, and stuck with across that year. Um, so, you know, yes, people that are in the film do things that are occasionally technically very minorly illegal i mean i think you have to kind of put it into perspective the, they're not violent the, kind of, in the people you are following not the groups that i was following no. they're they're all kind of participate in non-violent actions and marina you are a sort of we could call you a guerrilla tea lady really aren't you in the sense that your your big thing is taking make, wherever you go make a pot of tea because that's important yes why um because we are doing things that are outside ourselves, not from our normal um, everyday lives. And I think it's really important to normalise protest. So we have a cup of tea, the couples like a cup of tea, the activists love a cup of tea. And um, it, it just allows us to kind of still be ourselves and a bit formal. And also, if you've got a cup in one hand and a sauce in the other, it's very hard to sort of accuse you of, of violence. You are just there with your body and your teacup. And that's really important because if you're sort of fighting for some, something so important, um, as mitigating climate change and making the world a better place. You can't do it with violence. You have to start with absolute peace. And to me, uh, a cup of tea is absolute peace. Mm. What do you think about public opinion on the issue of climate change? Do you think that it is wholly on your side? Or do you think that recently that it's an issue that hasn't been so much of a priority to people? Well, personally, I think people um, are suffering so much with austerity measures and poverty that's almost taken over the mm. bit, of, bit of the worry. If you haven't got enough money for your bills, you're not actually that concerned about what might happen in the future, and that, that's quite natural. However, I think people are resigned to the fact that climate change is happening. Gardeners will know that the seasons are not behaving correctly. The weather's, uh, the rain's quite mad at the moment. And, and, and globally, people are suffering far more in other countries, um, either through drought or from, from flooding. And, um, and, and it is, nothing's going to change. All we can do is help highlight the cases and actually put some pressure on the governments to say, you know what, you're not going to get away with this. We are going to carry on fighting. Emily, your, your, your film features uh, people taking direct action of various sorts, breaking into power stations, mm -hmm. confronting the, the police or gluing themselves to desks, you know, doing yeah. things that are uh, against the law. When you are making a film like this, to what extent are you observing and to what extent are you actually collaborating? Because to be there, you've got to be part of it in a sense, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that I did my job as a filmmaker essentially as an observational filmmaker going in and kind of filming. I, didn't, I don't think I ever changed the situation of what was going on or anything like that. But I think in order to um, achieve that, you, you do have to sort of get stuck in. So I would ride along with them in situations where if we were stopped, we would have all been arrested. It's all from the viewpoint, though, of the activists, isn't it? So here, for instance, they're trying to break into a, a, a power station. We yeah. don't hear the viewpoint in detail of the people who are in charge of a coal-fired 
power station. No, you, you don't. I mean, that was, a, that was a kind of conscious and deliberate choice. I, I, I decided that I wanted to make a film about the culture of these people and to kind of show what they were like. And so it really goes back to a kind of anthropological filmmaking, which is about participant observation and getting to know a group of people mm -hmm. and trying to make something that expresses their perspective and their point of view. And, and to, be, to be frank, we know what the coal industry thinks about coal. They love it. That's the problem. And that's what we need to get you know, people to understand, including the coal industry. And that perspective gets an awful lot of airtime. It's like, you know, I mean, I think the, that other side of the story is not lacking in opportunities to tell its tale. All right, well, thanks very much, both of you, for joining us Thank this you. morning. The film is called Just Do It. It's out uh, on the 15th.